Welcome to My Vaccine is Jesus. Today's discussion is in the Biblical Symbols and Orthodox Iconography playlist of this YouTube channel and is entitled Christ in Majesty. Before we begin a short prayer, all blessing, honor, glory, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, for now and forever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. We pray to the Triune God to be filled with the Holy Spirit, so I'm empowered to speak truth without error, and to interpret Holy Scripture correctly. All truth comes from God. Any errors are my own. I also pray that you, the listener, may likewise be filled with the Holy Spirit so that any truth I speak or any scripture that I interpret correctly is welcomed in your heart, your mind, and your soul. Now let us begin the discussion. So we're going to be going over this Orthodox icon I think is quite beautiful, uh, entitled Christ in Majesty. Let's start here. So this obviously is a representation of the face of Jesus Christ. And to kind of give you a sense of what these Greek letters mean, let's go to the first verse of the Gospel of Mark in Greek. Architu evailio i isu Christu iu theu. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, Son of God. So if you notice, Jesus in Greek is i isus. And if you look, it's I and C. The, these are capital letters. So the I is obviously the first letters you see there. The C is the capital letter for the S sound. And you, if you look over to the left, that's that third letter that kind of looks like an O with a little horizontal line to the upper right corner. So that's e, that would stand for e, Jesus, the I-C. And then Christu, the X-C. So it's the same thing. The X is the first letter you see. The C would be the capital letter of the fourth letter in. Okay, Jesus Christos. Now let's look over what's in the cruciform halo. It looks like O-W-N or own. And that's there's a play on one of my t-shirts, property of own or on. So where does that come from? <clears throat> Exodus chapter 3. Verses 13 through 15 here. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? Verse 14. And God said unto Moses. Now remember, this is the angel of the Lord speaking in the bush. This is the pre-incarnate Jesus. So notice who declares these names. It's actually the second person of the triune God, the pre-incarnate Son of God. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am, hath sent me unto you. Verse 15. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Now in the Hebrew, you'll see the I am who I am would be, uh, is an English translation of Eye Aser Eye, which is how you would say it in Hebrew. Now in the Greek, and obviously these letters we're saying over there come from the Greek. Um, in, in This is from the Septuagint, right? The Greek translation of the Hebrew and Aramaic texts of the Old Testament written at least 200 years before the time of Christ. Here's how Exodus 3.14 would read. It says, Que ipen o theos pros mo ison legon, egoi mi on, que ipen utos iris tus ios Israel o on apestal que me pros imas. See, egoi mi o on, I am that I am, o on sent me to you. So, O'on. So basically in the cruciform halo, he's declaring the name I am, that I am right there. Pretty cool, huh? All right, now here's, you'll see this often in Christ's right hand. He's doing a blessing and you'll see the index finger is in the I. The middle finger is curved like a C. The thumb and ring finger are touching, that's the X. And the pinky curved, even though in this one it looks kind of straight, but usually it'll have a little curve to it. So it he's blessing you with the name Jesus Christos. Pretty cool, huh? And there's his feet. Now there's, Lord willing, so much you can talk about about the feet of Christ. Um, I mean, it, that he washes the disciples' feet. The first nail most likely went to his heel. It goes to, you know, the idea of the, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent from Genesis chapter 3. It refers to, you know, even what we just looked at where the, the angel of the Lord appears in the burning bush. He tells Moses, take off your shoes. This is holy ground. You see the same thing in Joshua 5. And then you see in the, the, in, 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 in the New Testament when John the Baptist is talking about Jesus Christ, what does he say? I'm not worthy to stoop down and unloose his sandals. So there's so much about, about the feet. But putting that aside, look at these little, these are wheels, winged red wheels, wheels of fire. 
So when you have a reference to this in the Old Testament, Ezekiel chapter 1, let's read verses 15 through 21 here. Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel. And the four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. As for the rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Where the sword of the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go. And the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went. And when those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. And now let's look at those four red creatures on the kind of on the you know the upper right upper left lower right lower left that have the halos and are holding books so to get into this let's uh, go to Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 2 and 3 in the year that King Uzziah died I the prophet Isaiah saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple above it stood the seraphims each one had six wings with twain he covered his face and with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Let's go back to Ezekiel chapter 1, some verses earlier than what we already looked at. We'll look at verses 5 through 10. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And everyone had four faces. And everyone had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. And they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. As the likeness of their faces, the four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. And the four had the face of an ox on the left side. The four also had the face of an eagle. Let's go to Revelation chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. And before the throne... There was a sea of glass like unto crystal. In the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion. Notice the lion in the lower left. And the second beast was like a calf. Notice the calf or the ox in the lower right. And the third beast had the face of a man. There's the man in the upper left. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. You see that in the upper right. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Which reminds you of what those uh, uh, seraphim were saying in Isaiah chapter 6. We first started, and that's why I included it. Let's start here in the lower left. Notice it's a lion holding a book. And most traditions, including the Orthodox, consider this a reference to the Gospel of Mark. Why? Well, as you see here, chapter 1, verse 3, the voice of one crying in the wilderness like a, like a lion would cry, scream, you know, calling out, roaring, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now, other traditions look at it as an example of Matthew in that the lion represents a king. So let's look at Matthew starting with uh, verse 1 through verse 11. The book of the generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the king, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac became Jacob, Jacob became Judas and his brethren, and Judas began Pharaoh's and Zerah of Tamar, and Pharaoh's begat Ezra, and Ezra begat Aram, and Aram begat Aminadab, uh, and Aminadab begat Naasam, and Naasam begat Salmon, Salmon begat Booz of, or Boaz actually, of Rachel, Rachel. Or recap, sorry, and Boaz began Obed of Ruth, and Obed began Jesse, and Jesse began David the king. And David the king begat Solomon, of her that him and the wife of Arias, and Solomon begat Rehoboam, and Rehoboam began Abiah, and Abiah began Asa, and Asa began Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat began Joram, and Joram began Ozias, and Ozias began Joatham, and Joatham began Achaz, and Achaz began Ezekias, and Ezekias began Manassas, and Manassas began Amen, and Ava began Josias, and Josias began Jeconias, and his brethren, about the time they were carried away to Babylon. Forgive me for reading all this. Verses now 12 to 17. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias 
began Salathia, and Salathia begat Jorobabel, and Jorobabel begat Abiad, and Abiad begat Eliakim, and Eliakim began Azor, and Azor began, begat Sadok, and Sadok begat Achim, and Achim begat Iliad, and Iliad begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Mathan, and Mathan began Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14, and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14, and from the carrying away to Babylon unto the Christ are 14 generations. So the idea of the lion representing the king, and notice it traced Christ back to King David, doesn't it? Then the lower right is the ox or the calf, and uh, most traditions, Orthodox included, consider this a reference to the Gospel of Luke. Why? Um, Luke chapter 1, verses 8 to 9, it came to pass that while he executed Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, the priest's office before God and the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense. When he went in the temple of the Lord and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. You know, incense is a sacrifice to the Lord and an ox or calf would be the main sacrificial animal to the Lord. Now, other traditions look at this as a reference to the Gospel of Mark. There's no verses. It's the idea that Mark shows Christ as a servant. And as an example of it, I found this reference, that if you look at the term immediately, because there's they go over the works. The idea is Gospel of Mark is the works of Christ. He's the workman. He's the workman for his father, right? And just looking at this concept of the word immediately, in the Gospel of John, immediately is in 14 verses, in Luke, 26 verses, in Matthew, 27, but yet in Mark, it's 50. <laughs> You know, more than double the other two and you know, quadruple uh, back of John. So there really wasn't a verse I could find that would support this concept of the Gospel of Mark representing this. But this is this idea, you know, suffices hopefully for you. Right. <clears throat> the idea of uh, Matthew is the the man because it traces it traces Christ, you know, to to the it starts with notice his his. His, um, through his father, of course, his, his um, you know, stepfather. Is the, and I'm not going to read through all of these things, but it's the idea of Matthew representing that. Okay. Well, other traditions look at it as Luke, that this picturing Christ as the, um, as the son of man, because this genealogy, which is probably through Mary, again, the others through his stepfather in Matthew, traces him all the way to the son of man. God, Adam. And what I'm not going to do to you is go through every single verse, but it starts in verse 23 of chapter 3 and makes its way all the way to verse 38, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So Luke's genealogy through his mother traces Christ's bloodline all the way back to Adam. Interesting. And then everyone agrees that the eagle represents John, the evangelist, the, you know, the divine gospel. I mean, look how, it, look how it just starts. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of darkness, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it, if not. You know, the beautiful first five verses of the um, preamble, the prologue of the Gospel of John the Evangelist. Now, finish things off, you'll see it, that there were these in, in, the, in the icon, there were these six of these winged creatures. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 6. And the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. Notice this. Twenty covered his face. There they are. Twenty covered his feet. There they are. Twenty did fly. And then let's look at Ezekiel chapter 1, and compared to Revelation chapter 4, uh, Ezekiel 1, verse 28, as the appearance, this is this is around the throne of God, as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, a rainbow. So it was the appearance of the brightness round about, it was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, it fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. And then Revelation 4, verse 3, and he that sat, you know, the one on the throne, was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. Beautiful. So there's the Orthodox icon, Christ in majesty, beautiful icon. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed the uh, discussion. And when I pointed out, obviously there's, there's most likely other things I could have spoken of. Hopefully that was edifying to you. I pray I spoke truth and interpreted Holy Scripture correctly so that this discussion might have been a blessing to you, the listener. All truth comes from God. Any errors were my own. 
it was a blessing to you, I would greatly appreciate it. If you could like, comment, share it, subscribe to the channel. Lord willing, we shall meet again. May the Holy Trinity bless us all.